Hello! In this video we're going to be making the arcade game Frogger in GDevelop. This is what we're going to end up with. So I've actually done the tutorial, I've just looped back to do my introduction. I'm going to provide you with all the graphics, music and sound effects uh, on a Google Drive link. I'll also provide you a screenshot of my code so that you can sort of use it as a reference. The video is a little bit on the long side, well a lot on the long side. It's an hour and 40 minutes long, so I'm going to provide you with lots of chapters so that you can get in and out of it. Don't do it all in one hit, that would be crazy. My eyes were quite wobbly by the end of it. I got the graphics from this site here. This is classicgaming.cc, just Google Frogger graphics, but I've cut these out to make life easier for you, so just use my link. Uh, it was made by Todd Harrington by the looks of things. Thank you very much, Todd. Your graphics are wonderful. Uh, you can get GDevelop here. GDevelop is an open source programming language designed for making games, but you can make other things with it as well. It is free. It is on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, did I say Linux? <laughs> Linux. Uh, yeah, and it can make games for all of those platforms. So let's get into it. Let's make Frogger. So we're going to start from scratch. We're going to click on this, these three lines here. Go to File, Create, New Empty Project. I'm going to leave mine at 720. That one that you're looking at was 720 by uh, 128. I've reduced from the arcade game how many lines of cars and turtles and logs there are uh, by one. There's one less um, row of cars, one less row of logs. Um, if you crack, crank it up to full depth, you'll be able to um, Add that in there if you want to. I'm going to call it Frogger. I'm going to call it Frogger 2 just to not overwrite one that I've already worked on. Uh, I'm going to choose the folder it's on. It's going to already point at where my graphics are, but you'll have to point it to where your folder is. OK. I don't want to um, allow players to authenticate in game. It doesn't matter if you leave it, but I'm going to get rid of it. It's just this stupid logon thing that, they, that it will put in there if you don't say not, you don't want it. Cool, here's my editing screen. I've got my untitled scene. Um, this is where you add your graphics and whatnot. I don't have objects on, let's switch that on. Uh, I'm going to um, name this scene. Uh, I'm going to call it a welcoming screen. I'm only going to use two scenes. Scenes are a way of dividing up your game uh, into different sections. Um, I'm only going to use two. I'm going to use a welcoming screen, so I'll just rename this. Welcome, it's just start screen, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to have my main actual program, so I'm going to have it all in one scene. Um, where are we going? Rename. I'll call it Frogger. This is my main game. Um, I'm also going to have some uh, external layouts. This is a way of importing graphics into your game. I'm going to use it to import. Uh, add levels to my game. So I'm going to add it to layout and whoops, I didn't mean to get out of that so I'll just go back and rename it. And I'm going to name it 1. I'm going to name it a number because that means I can have a variable incrementing going up, up one by one uh, to load my uh, various levels. And then now I need to uh, get into one of these scenes. I'm going to open the welcome scene um, and then I'm going to change the background to black. Open scene properties I'm going to set that to black and OK it. And then I'm going to start adding some objects. Scene objects are ones that only exist on that particular scene. Global objects are um, swapped between scenes. I'm going to use pretty much exclusively scene objects, but you want to, might want to have some global objects in your main game so that you could like, have animations and whatnot in your welcome screen using your game objects, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add a sprite. A sprite is an object that moves. This isn't going to move, but um, I might if I was doing it properly um, animated or whatever. So I'm going to uh, call it title. I'm importing. Uh, it's actually called logo in terms of the graphic file. Drag that in. Uh, add one, another graphical element. It's another sprite. Uh, call it frog. Apply. Oops, I didn't load the image. So if you mess something up, you can easily go back and um, change it. So I'm going to load in Frog with Suitcase, apply, and drag it in. There's my frog. Beautiful. Now I'm going to add um, some instructions, which I'm just using with a sprite. Um, 
I'm gonna call this insert coin. Doesn't really matter what you call it in this particular case. I'm gonna import some images. This time I'm importing two images because it's an animation. I'm gonna open that and um, yep, I also need to, I want this to loop. So I'm gonna click on loop so it keeps playing it over and over again. And that's way too fast. I'm gonna do it one per second, apply, and then I'll drag it onto the screen. So there's my instructions of what to do. And I want it so that if I press space, it'll go to the game. So I need some code for that. So I'll go to the welcome event. So events is where we do code. I'm gonna add a new event. I need a condition for that event. Um, I'm gonna to go to other conditions, keyboard, uh, key is release. So I've pressed a key and released it. In this case, I'm gonna look for the space bar. Space, okay. And then what do I want to have happen? I'm gonna add an action. Other action, scene, change the scene, which scene, I'm gonna to go to the game. So I've done a bit of coding and, and whatnot already. So let's preview that, see what happens. I've got my welcoming screen, I press space, and I'll get to the next scene, the actual game. Sweet, so that's that done. The welcoming scene. So let's get into the game proper. Frogger. All right, let's start adding objects. So first I'm gonna add all of my uh, object, like tiled objects that don't move. So I'm gonna add an object, tiled sprite. So a tiled sprite is something that doesn't move. I'm gonna add grass. Um, all of my tile sprites are 64 pixels. I've resized them so that it all fits well into the game. 64 by 64. Choose a file, find the file, and grass. Uh, apply that. I'm going to add a new object, tile sprite, call it road. 64, 64, choose a file, and then where is it? LMMA road. And apply it. Add a new object, uh, tiled sprite, 64 by 64. Uh, this will be the uh, bush that's up the top of the screen. Choose a file, and I called it bush. There it is. Open, apply, cool. Add a new object, need the lily pads for the top. Tiled Sprite, Lily, 64, 64, choose a file, choose a file, Lily, Lily Pad, 64, open, apply, add an object, Tiled Sprite, 64, 64, taken, Lily taken, so once you've grabbed the Lily, It'll turn into this. Uh, choose a file, choose a file. Uh, Lily Taken is in there, there it is. Um, I, what else do I have? Oh, that's water. Add an object, tiled sprite, 64 by 64. Water, choose a file. Choose a file where I have the water down the bottom. Open, apply. I think that's all my tile. Actually, I've got a couple more, got a couple of weird ones. I'm going to add a new object. Um, actually, I've got the game over tile. Let's load that. Or I forget tile sprite. Game over. Actually, I think I did this as a sprite, not a tile sprite, so I'll cancel that. Just to, um, actually, well, I need a tile sprite, so um, I'll do a side one. So this is for, um, I'm going to have the screen wrap go off the screen, like an extra half uh, screen. So I've got an image of half of the screen size, um, just to help me visualize it. So it's not really part of the game, you won't actually see it in the game. I'll probably put it on there and delete it uh, later but it's just for helping me design what I'm doing. 
Uh, I also need a um, tiled sprite for the tiler. This time it red. This one is 300 wide, 16 high, because there's a time limit in the game. And I'll just choose the file. And now I'm going to do timer 300. Apply, add a new object. Now I'm going to start on the sprites. Just because I've already done the timer, let's put the other timer in. Timer. I'll just call it this one timer. This is the actual one that I'll be manipulating. Oh, and this is the tile sprite or the sprite sprite? Yep, this is the sprite sprite. Is what I want because I'm going to actually uh, do things with this uh, timer. Open, cool, apply. Let's get our frog into the game. So add a new object, uh, sprite, I call a sprite frogger. I'm going to import images and this frog one is my first frog. I'm going to do some editing of this uh, frog. First, I want to edit um, the points. Uh, this is your orientation and your rotation point. Um, I want this to be the same on all of the animations and all of the sprites of the animation. So that's all good. I'll leave it on. I want it to be in the middle. It defaults to the top corner. Um, you don't want it to do that. You want it to be where the middle of the object is. There we go. Quite right. Beautiful. Uh, that's okay. Close that. Uh, now I'm going to add some more animations. Uh, add a sprite. Um, so because this is an animation, it's got multiple frames. I can load multiple pull of them at once. I'll just double check that that edit points works because it didn't. Yep, cool. It's still. I don't know how to check that. This one. Yeah, it's good. Um, so I actually want it to um, move behind. So the way I one of the oddly difficult things to do in GDevelop is to move things in exact distance and that's what Frogger does. Frogger moves according to a grid. So what I've done to actually do that is I'm um, allowing enough space. So if I edit um, this is pixel so you can see the um, frame, I've got enough space for it to move one grid. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I move it within the um, the the animation and then right at the last moment I move it to exactly where it needs to be. Uh, I do want to edit collision masks so I've actually written down the numbers that I'm going to use a custom one. This I want to switch all this off because I want it to be different on every frame. I'm just going to quickly go through and switch this off. This can be fiddly sometimes it doesn't work and you have to do it twice. Um, so the last couple of times I've been lucky. I'm just going to go through and switch them all off and go back to the first one and start putting in my own numbers. Uh, so that's, uh, sorry, two, 30, 32, and then seven, seven, 40. 40, and I got one wrong. Wouldn't make any difference really, but let's just be fussy. Let's go to animation cell one. So we want to move these along, so that's now going to be 12, 12, 40, 40, 12, 12, 42. So I'm moving the collision uh, mask along with the for the ride, so just click that back. Let's check that it hasn't messed up the other one. No, still good. Beautiful. Let's go to the next frame. Switch this off again. I don't know. You saw me switch it off, but I don't know why it came back on again. So now we're adding 10 to it. 32 moving along. 60. 60. So again, you can drag the drag points to do this. Um, I found when I did it that way, the numbers were ended up being pretty much exactly the same as what I did when I went back and um, did it by hand. Uh, so 46, uh, 46, 74, 
46, 74, 12, 12, 14, 14. Oops, something's gone wrong there. Um, what have I done wrong? Ah, uh, this should be 74. That should be 46. Beautiful. Uh, 3. Uh, 54. 82. 82. 54. And then these are the same. 12, 12, 42, 42. Last frame. 63. 91, 91, 63. Beautiful. And then uh, I will, because I'm paranoid, close that and apply it, and I'll go back in just to check that all worked. So I'll edit points, just have a quick look, that's in the middle, let's just choose a random frame. Yep, that's good, it's, it's meant to fall behind, that's how it works, that's good. Uh, and now I choose the collision masks and just have a quick look, that looks okay. Yep, it's moving, beautiful, beautiful, and it all worked, cool. So we have got our frogger done. Um, well, I even know I didn't do anything. So let's add some of our other uh, animated, animated objects. I'm going to add a new object. I'm going to, um, this is something that's moving, so it's going to be a sprite. It's going to be uh, the cars. I'm going to import an image. Car one. You've got five in there in terms of graphics. I'm just going to add four because that's all I'm going to use. But you can add the fifth one if you want. Uh, this one's a bit easier than the frog because I don't have to do anything to it. Car three. The um, because I'm not rotating it. Like, uh, whoops, made too many there. Add a sprite. Uh, four. Oh, what the hell, things I've accidentally done. Let's load the fifth one in there. Beautiful. So I've got my five cars. Don't have to edit in any way uh, in terms of um, points or masks, but I do have to add a behavior. I don't have to, there's a different way ways of doing it. Behavior is a way of doing complicated code without doing the code yourself, like there's inbuilt ones. I'm going to add that behavior of a text wrap, or screen wrap, sorry. A wrap, screen wrap. So what that means is if it goes off one side of the screen, it comes back on the other. I'm going to do that off screen, as I mentioned before. I'm going to make it, um, particularly because of the logs, because they kind of appear. By having them way off the screen, um, you don't see them appear. And also, in the real game, it's more than one screen worth of obstacles. It doesn't just or, uh, wrap from one to the other. Uh, so I've just added an extra half screen on either side that you can't see. Uh, and I also need a veritable. Uh, add a veritable. These, this is a veritable that's attached to um, the uh, sprite itself, that object. Um, so you can have veritables that are attached to them. So every car will have its own um, veritable called speed. So I can use that to make the cars go different speeds, even though they're um, actually the same thing. I'll leave it at the default of zero. Cool, let's add the log. The sprite, call it log. This is going to be turtles and your log. So import images. I'm going to do the small log first. Doesn't really matter, but that's what I'm doing. Add the next one. Add sprite. I'm not actually going to use the middle log, but what the hell, let's put it in there. Add animation, add sprite, large log. Uh, where am I going, big? Cool bananas, uh, add animation. Now I'm gonna add the turtles. Now the turtles, I, I've made uh, multiple on one sprite. The first time I did this, I did them as individual uh, turtles and you can do it that way, I did it and it worked. But I kind of trust it more if uh, they their own, like I've joined the sprites, just because there's some, uh, might be issues with you being able to jump in between the turtles, which isn't really part of the game. That never happened, um, so I'm just sort of being paranoid. Open, so there's my turtle animation. 
Uh, the animation, uh, I want it to be a bit um, slower than that maybe. Let's make it 0.1. Oops. And we loop it. It, it keeps going um, over and over again because they're, they're paddling their little legs. I'm going to add an animation. Add a sprite. This time I'm going to do the turtles diving. So this is another element of the game. These images, there's really only five in there. I've repeated them. I've done it that way um, just to sort of make it easier to report them all like this. Uh, this one has to go slower but, um, because it um, gives you a chance to get on and off the thing. Um, and I'll witness the loop. Call bananas. So that's the two. I'm going to add an animation. And do the three turtles. Add a sprite. Till three, not the dive one, sorry, we'll do this one first. Open, make it a bit slower. Um, I need to loop it, and then I just need to add the diving of the, of the three. Add animation, uh, add sprite, turtle dive. And uh, three is one, ten. Open and loop, but much slower. You might want to make extra ones if you want to expand your game so that you can have different speeds of turtle, like an easy way of making the game harder. You can make the diving, like these you wouldn't edit, but the diving ones you might want to make them dive faster. Uh, and then I do actually need to edit these. I'm going to edit points. Actually, not edit points, I'm going to edit collision mask. The points don't matter, the collision mask do. Uh, I'm going to use custom masks, uh, and it's going to be different for each animation. The reason I want to edit this is because um, if I had one pixel touching the edge, it would still keep me on the log, which doesn't really make much sense. Uh, so I'm going to bring that in. So 18, can't type, 18. One six seven. One six seven. Eighteen. Beautiful. Uh, go to the next one. Same deal. So it's eighteen. That shouldn't be zero. It won't make much difference, but let's make it. It should be um, two five five. Five. Okay. Three. So now we're at eighteen. So eighteen. Three, three, five. That looks right. Three, three, five. Now that should be fifty-nine, but let's leave it. Uh, three. So we're into the first arm um, of the turtles. Um, so again, eighteen. Same with the front because it's you're standing on the head. Um, the gap on the back is going to be smaller um, because um, it makes sense that it, that, um, it kind of has more rigid back to it. Uh, turtle, and then the frames shouldn't matter except for. Oh no, in this one it doesn't matter, so I'll leave it alone. We'll go to four, to, uh, update that one. So, what, what do we have? 18, so it should be the same as the um, previous one. Um, 1, 2, 2, four, I one, two, two. 18. Yeah, that's good, it's gone down lower. Um, that should be fine, I'm going to leave that. Uh, I'm going to go to the next frame. Uh, the only one I need to alter is when it gets to the, the thing sunk. Right, so it's underwater now. I want this to be a separate um, collision mask. I'm going to get rid of one of them and then you just throw them in the corner. So this throws you off basically because you won't be standing on the edge there. Uh, so it's a, it's a simple way of having the effect of you dying when you go off the edge without actually having to code it. Same with this one, I'll do the same thing. Get rid of one of them. Don't think it matters if there's four really, but I'll just do that. 
Beautiful. And then the rest should be good. Yep, that's all good. Close that. And then let's do the three. So I'm going to, oops, I didn't, I'll go back into it. Close your mouse, I shouldn't have got out. So what was that? To? I did cancel that. I did the um, three logs. I did that. The diving one. Just check that's good. Yeah. So I'm up to the fifth one. With the, um, so that really just needs to crank that up to 18. And 18. I'm happy enough with that. I'm just going to leave it there. That's good. Uh, these are all okay. Don't have to do anything with them. Go to the last one. Same, same. 18. 18. Actually, maybe bring that in a little bit. Um, so what did I put in the other one? So rather than... I'll change this to 49. 49, is that right? Uh, no, I'll just hand move it then. It's a little bit too generous, I think. I'll just move that in. Do the same thing with the previous one. Cool. Just check it's still okay. Yeah. Alright, go to this one. And same deal, I've got to go through the frames, that's all good. And then I guess to the uh, fourth, yep, fourth, I'll get rid of one of them and set it all to zero. So again, this is throwing you off. You die if you're sitting up, standing on it when, when it gets to this one. Five, oops, I'll do all of them. Damn it! <laughs> I forgot to change that. All right, we can fix that. Alright, so we'll just quickly do that. Um, so we're on three. I'll add a vertex. I'll we'll put the numbers in. Uh, what was it? 18, 1, 6, 7, 18, 1, 6, 7. Just so write those down and then. 59, 59 again, 59, 59, and then what have I done? Okay, 59, and then that should be, I think that should be 18, and that should be 167. Nope, which would have been the middle two, so 167, 18. Alright, sweet, sorry, a bit of an error there. Um, we'll just go a little bit higher, check that looks alright. No, sorry, this one. This one, that's good. That's not nice, I'll just move it further out. Alright, let's try that again. So we'll go to the fourth frame. This time we'll remember to switch that off and then put it in, this, in the corner. And then we'll go to this one. Same deal, that's switched off, that's good. Get rid of one of them. Corner. Now, unfortunately, you can't just delete it, it actually will just create one automatically if you do. So, you can't have a spot with accuracy mask. So, I'll close that and apply it, and then I'm just going to be a little bit paranoid because it takes a long time to do all that. I just check. So, edit collision mask, that looks good. That looks good. Oops, that's the same one. That looks good. I'll choose a random um, frame in there. Yep, all looks good. Four, this one should dump me at four and five. Looks like it's going to do that. It's all good. Uh, five looks good. Six, staying the same. And then at four, four and five should dump me. Cool. So there is our logs done. Whoops, forgot to do the wrap. So let's get back in. Behaviors, how to behavior. Screen wrap, minus 640. And 1920. And I need that veritable again. The um, add veritable uh, speed. It's not a string, it's a number. And so the zero apply. Cool, just double check if I did that with that. Oh, I can't remember. Yep, it's a number, sweet. Cool. So I've got the timer. So what other sprites do we have? We have a death sprite when you die. Put that one in. Let's just 
Scum Crossbones. And go up a level. Uh, death. Kill. Doesn't animate or anything, that's so good. Oh, I do actually have to edit the points because I'll be creating it where the frog is. You want the points to be in the middle, otherwise it'll put it in a weird spot and could be off to the side or whatever. Uh, but it doesn't need a variable or anything like that. Uh, just it's a weird order to have them in. Cool. Uh, what else do I need? I need. Uh, we've got the timer. I need the game over. Make that with a sprite. Game over. Oh, I almost forgot. Lives. So I'll import. I'll just import that game over. Where are we going? ACDF. There it is. Can't see. Always forget one of them, so that's all good. Apply. And we need our lives graphics. So uh, this is a sprite. We call it lives. Gonna import an image. And then where we got? So I've got zero lives. That's the graphic for it. And animation and sprite. I have one live life. And animation. As a sprite, I have two lives open. As an animation, as a sprite, I have three lives open. As an animation, as a sprite, I have four lives open. Uh, apply. Let me think, is that everything? I think that's everything. And later on, I'm, I actually need to be able to uh, wipe uh, this screen. So I'm going to actually create a group. So, frogger, yeah, that's everything. Uh, I'm going to group um, objects. So I'm going to open group panel. I'm going to um, add a new group, call it uh, clear. So I'm going to use this to clear the screen to load a new level. Um, bam, and I'll just double click on it. And I'll start adding all those objects in there. Need the grass, need the road, need the bush. It might be an easy way of doing this, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, I don't actually need the lily. Um, I'm going to do that in a slightly different way. Uh, water, uh, side, I suppose, because it will make a difference. Uh, red timer, so basically everything. I'm putting everything in there, everything must go. It's just uh, a handy way of wiping the screen when I want to do that. Um, car, Death won't need it, but I'll put it in there just to be normal. That I do need the lives, yeah, that's everything. Uh, apply, cool. And I'll just hide that, don't need it anymore. I'll use it. You'll probably forget about it by the time I get to it. Uh, cool, that's all my objects. I think I've done all the, the coding sort of in, in the graphics for the objects. Uh, let's now uh, make a level. So we'll click on uh, this little thing, the project manager, and go to uh, external layout one. Choose a scene that it's associated with. I want to associate it with the Frogger level. And let's start drawing it all up. I want to have the grid on, so I'll switch this on. Show grid. Um, this is 32 by 32. You can change it if you want. You can go in there and set it up, but 30 by 32 is fine by me for what I'm doing. So I'm going to drag in the grass. Pull that out. I am going to put on the row. Just eyeball that. I've got it in one. Beautiful. I'm going to put some more grass in. Now the way we're doing it, this is the setup of the arcade game. It had a road and then um, a bit of uh, grass and then the, the water. Um, but you're not limited to that. You can um, do it any which way you want. So you could have a level that's all water. You can have a level that's all road. Um, so, you know, uh, use your imagination. There we go. So three. These are the, your endpoints where you're trying to get to. So, just trying to, there we go. What's that? One, two, three, four, six. Uh, if you hold down control, um, you copy things. Let's so copy two things at once there. And I'll just do one more. Beautiful. And um, some bush at the top. 
cover the, the bits. One over the other side. Another one. The other four. So here's my base level. Um, I'm going to use the side bits to help me design. So this is not really part of the game. It's just so, so I can easily visualize um, the part of the screen that I can't see. Um, I'm going to have a timer on there. Let's try that on there. And this, the timer is actually two parts. It needs that black line and this uh, red line. Uh, the black line needs to be on top. Uh, I need a score. I haven't made that yet, so let's create a new object. It's going to be a text object. I'm going to crank it up to 30. You might want to choose a nice font. I can't be bothered. It's called score. Set to zero. Apply it. Drag that onto the screen. So that's how we keep score in the game. We need our lives on the screen. Beautiful. You can, um, at the moment, I've got because you've got the grid on, everything's uh, sticking to the grid. Um, I want to move this score pixel by pixel, so I'm just uh, using the keyboard to do it, I'm using the cursor keys to move it to exactly where I want it. Cool bananas. Uh, what else do we need? We need the frog. Put him on the screen. Uh, I know where I want to put him, so I'm going to actually. So it's, what was the number again for him? 670. So just move in to 672. Uh, 72, which way that way? So I'm using the keyboard to do it. I know where I'm putting it, so that's, um, you'd have to eyeball it to try and figure it out. Um, you want it to be in the middle of each one of, the, one of those squares. Um, you can have uh, properties for each of your items, so I want to turn him around. Um, you want the graphics to be facing to the right um, because the orientation defaults is um, to the right. So if I make the graphics point to the right, then whenever I turn it, um, it'll work properly with the game. So that's um, why I've turned him to the right, even though when I start the game, I want him pointing up. So I'm going to um, open um, object. Um, instance properties. So that means you can have different properties for different, I could have two frogs on the screen if I want to. I'm going to change the angle to 270, which is pointing up. Cool bananas. Uh, let's start putting some obstacles in there. So I'm going to put a car in. Uh, this first car, I think we'll be moving um, to the left. So I'm going to change the angle to 180, so flip it basically. Give it a speed. I'm gonna, don't, don't go crazy with your first ones. Work, don't want to go too fast. Let's make it uh, 160 for this one. So get it how you want it. I want to go 160. I've got it at the right angle. Once you've got it how you want it, I'll just zoom out a little bit. Uh, just add some more. So I'm holding down control to duplicate but this one because when I duplicate it, it will have the same um, variables. Uh, and I'm going to be nice and just give myself some decent amount of space between objects. Because when I get to test it, I want to be able to um, finish the level easily. And you give the people a chance to sort of get into the game. Uh, let's add another car. Uh, let's just make this one the yellow car. So uh, this yellow car was two, I think. Um, yeah, that's two. Oops, I did the wrong one. I always do that. Move that up here. I'll just recopy this. Um, I don't want this one to be 180, so I'll just put it back to zero, which is facing left, because um, it's moving to the right. Just don't make that negative. No, I didn't. So these, because they're going to the left, um, it should actually be minus 160, not 160. So minus is moving to the left, positive is moving to the right. See why you want to get it right the first time so that you don't have to go in and edit all of your um, objects. It's a little bit annoying. Now let's set up the yellow car so it's facing the right direction. 
Uh, it's going the wrong way. Oh, it's going the right way. Let's make this one fast. So we'll go 200. But we won't put Mandy on there so that it, it won't um, clean you up. Uh, so I could hold down control, space it out. Mm. Yeah, that's enough. Let's put the fire truck in there. Our fire truck is four, if I remember correctly. Animation. Oops, that's the other truck. Is it three? Yeah, the fire truck's three. Sweet. Um, I want it facing the other direction. Um, it's got to be a negative speed. Let's make it negative um, 150. I didn't put negative in, just testing and paying attention. And let's drag it out. There we go. Z all up 17. Um, yeah, that's alright. We'll leave it go. And then we'll put the last car in. This one's going the other way. This is one, I think, animation wise. Yep, green car, sweet. Um, so I did make that negative, you know, looks like I did two there, that would look weird. Um, so, I make that negative. Yep. Uh, let's make this one, uh, let's say, 180. It's a bit fast, that'll, that'll do, I won't put a lot of them in. And I'll make this guy driving groups, so there's two cars. And then another two cars. And then maybe one on its own. You should have two two cars in there. Then there's a gap between them. Beautiful. All right, now let's start putting the logs in. So the first logs aren't logs at all. They can be turtles. So I'll click on that. This will be the three turtles, which is um, animation uh, five, I think. So there's three, zero, one, two is the logs. Um, three, four is the, so that's five, is the non-diving turtles. So in these, um, you want to um, go the other way, like you want to give more than you need for the first level to make life a bit easy. Let's make it go, it's going to the right, sorry, to the left, so minus 150, make it nice and slow. Let's be generous and put a few in, whoops. So you've got quite a lot, it's not, not, not too many gaps, makes it easier for you to get on top of the turtles. And we'll make some of them divers. So this one, rather than five, I'll make it six. It'll look the same um, here, but it, it'll mean it will dive. Uh, two more ones and then a diver. Cool. Uh, no, now we'll put a log in. Uh, the log will make it a speed of um, we'll make the animation so the smallest of the, we'll go the smallest log actually, I'll just put multiple and then the big ones, I won't use the middle log. Um, we'll make it, um, should I make these slowly? I'll make these 140. I didn't actually type it in, that's weird. There we go. Uh, that's all good, we'll just duplicate it. Oops, didn't, didn't know that didn't work, try it again. Duplicate, be generous, put quite a lot of them in there. Maybe make it go in groups of two. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Uh, then we'll do the um, frogs, uh, sorry, turtles again. Um, so, log, the, the two turtle is. Uh, 0, 1, 2, is that so it's 3, is the turtle, 2 turtles. Uh, I'm going to make all of the other speed. Minus 150, let's make this one uh, minus, make it quicker. Hopefully I'm not making it too difficult. <laughs> Whoops. Minus 175. And then space them out. 
So you don't want anything going the same exact same speed because it'll, it'll look awkward. I mean, it's fine if they're going opposite directions, but if they're not, um, generally you want them to be going different speeds so that they don't all just sort of go together. Might be a bit generous there with the logs and whatnot. And put another log in. This one's going to be the big log, which is um, one, no, two. Yep, there it is. And uh, we'll make this one go. What speed do we make that? Oops, what happened there? Why doesn't it have a speed? Now, right, so I'm just didn't put the speed, so I'm going to delete all of them because it'll be quicker than to remake them. Then, um, so I think what did I, I did? I thought I, oh, I just didn't take it. So minus, what did I say? I was going to do 175. Yeah, I swear I did that. Anyway, try it again. I didn't put any divers in, so that's fine. I might as well re put it in and make some of them divers. And a bit of a gap there. Uh, so I'll make this one a diver. This one a diver. Don't want to get crazy with it. And I should just make this one fast. Uh, maybe not. Make, make it one. Well, Imprint 165. And we'll put quite a few of them in there. Oops. Sometimes you have to click on it and then off it again for it to, to work. So I've got two, a gap, and another two. Cool. And I think that's your level. Sweet. Alright, now let's actually do some coding. So we need to actually start the game up. So we'll go into the coding. Events. I'm going to uh, make groups. So uh, this, so an event group. This is just a way of organising your game. You wouldn't like there isn't a huge amount of car code in this, but it is nice being able to open and close it. So I'm going to call this the start code. I'm going to edit it and make it green, just to make it easier to look at. Beautiful. Um, and then I'm going to add an, add an event, add a condition. This is going to happen. Um, at the beginning of the level. So we went to scene, at the beginning of the scene do these things. So the very first time that you go into the scene it's going to do this. One of the things I do which is a bit odd is I make it play a sound. So I'll do that. Uh, I just find that it, um, the first time it plays a sound it kind of can mess it up. So I often just at the start of the level, people probably won't even notice it do it. I make it play a sound, uh, choose a file, uh, I'll just do the, the fog hop sound, kill, so that's just kind of like clearing the throat for the, for the game. I need a um, variable called start, this is how I manage starting a new level. So variables, scene variable, so it's just like the um, graphics, scene means it's just on the scene, global means it's throughout the game. Having it as a scene is kind of handy because uh, I can just go back to the start screen to reset everything. Uh, change number variable, uh, calling it start. And this is basically a trigger is what I'm using this for. So I'm just turning that trigger on. Set to one, okay. I'm gonna play the welcoming tune. And I'm gonna do that, so um, music and sound. Uh, music on channels. I wish they'd give me less options here. Play music on a channel is way too many. Uh, choose a file. And then I've got a folder for the music. Uh, song start. So that's the do 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 do. I want to have a channel identifier. Um, just a way of um, only having one tune playing at the same time. Uh, I'm going to have it quite low because it's just handy because I'll be talking over it and whatnot. You might want to have yours higher. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I also want to give myself lives. So I'm going to add an action, other action, um, what am I doing? Variables, scene variable, number variable called lives. I'm going to set four, give, give me four lives. Nice and generous. Cool bananas. Now let's uh, I'll put that within the start thing so I can hide it and bring it back. Alright, so we've 
set up the start of the scene, let's load a level. So I'm going to add a new event. I'm going to look at that start variable. That's basically the trigger to load a new level. So scene variable, number variable, variable start. Is it equal to one? If it is, we're going to make a new level. Just put it all in there. I'm going to um, add an action. The first thing I'm going to do is reset that start variable. Scene variable, uh, where is it? Number, start. I'm going to set it to one. No, not one, zero, to switch it off. Uh, I'm going to um, add one to the level. So I haven't got a variable level, but I'm going to create one. So scene variable, uh, change number variable. The variable is called level. This is how I'm going to increment my levels. I'm going to just add one straight away. So if it's if the first time running through, it's going to just equal one because it starts at zero and I've added one to it. Um, I'm going to lo uh, delete uh, any lilies taken on the screen. This is something I know I have to do. Um, I will delete everything else uh, when I finish the level, but this one I kind of have to delete here. Uh, but yeah, only because I know that that's what I have to do. I'm going to load the level. So uh, other actions, external layouts, create objects from external layout. Um, choose it. I'm going to use an expression. And I'm going to, oops, use expression. And then um, I'm going to use the variable string. So I'm converting the level into a, which this is expected text. I'm um, converting the level, which is a number, into text. I didn't spell string right. There we go. So just be wary if it's red, you've done something wrong. So that's loading the um, level for me. I'm going to create a, a timer called wait. Timers are just like stopwatches. This is, I'm going to use this timer um, basically um, to like um, stop the player from jumping straight away, uh, just so that if you're running quickly to, and you jump onto the lily, you don't accidentally jump onto the road uh, the next second. So it's just a little safety net. Uh, oops, I didn't, that's, I didn't use the wrong one there. That's not what I want. Add an action. That wasn't a timer that I did. Uh, it's different. Timers. Start a reset timer as well. I'm going to call it wait. Beautiful. So I'm, um, I'm going to ch uh, reset the timer. The timer is this black line because um, I've got a time limit for the game. Uh, I'm going to use it, set the width to one. That's basically resetting the timer. You're to four. And now let's get things moving. Now, usually you want to get as much in there as possible, but there are some limitations that can cause bugs. Um, I could actually move, start the cars moving um, here um, if I was if I loaded the level with a scene, but for some reason, if I do it as an external layout, I need to have it as a subcondition. So logic to it, like what reason why I have to do this, but I have to do it. It's just the way it is. So I'm going to add an action uh, car. I'm going to give it a force. That's how we get things moving. Add force at an angle. The angle is zero. And the speed is the car. Dot variable, because it's a variable associated with that car. And the variable is speed. Beautiful. Uh, and I don't want it to be instant. I want it to be permanent, so it keeps doing it. So it starts moving and keeps moving. Uh, let's just copy that and paste it in for the log. So that becomes log rather than car. And it's not the car speed anymore, it's the log speed. Oops, didn't get it. Ah, there we go, log. And what else do I need? Oh, I need to update the live. So I'm going to do, uh, add an action, the animation lives, which is how we see how many lives we've got. There it is. I'm going to set that to. Um, animation by number, whatever my lives are, which is variable lives. Beautiful. Cool, we're done. So we've done quite a lot there. Let's see how we go. Uh, let's see how it works. Beautiful. It's a lot of things going. I like the little speeds of things. I don't, I think this is a bit odd. Maybe I'll just slow those um, big turtles down, but everything else looks good. 
nothing sort of tracking, but that those turtles go going, going rough speed. There's something uh, I noticed right before the end. There's something odd with the the big turtles as well. There's one going the wrong way or some direction. So I'll just make this slower. Make it 30. 130. Sorry, not 30. That's way too slow. Just so they're not matchy matchy, because it looks a bit dodge. And yeah, there's oh, it's, is one going the wrong direction? Let's see if we can find it. Oh, there was one just going fast, that's what was happening. Oops, minus 130. Minus 130. So you can see why you want to get it right first time. It's kind of annoying to go and edit all of them, but there you go. Beautiful. Uh, now let's get the frog going. So we've got the, all the other objects moving, let's make the frog move. So we'll go to events, I can hide all this away, I'm happy with that, that's all done. I'm going to add a new event group. I'm going to call this one frogger. And that's not easy being green, so we'll choose another green for the frogger. Just a darker one. Obviously the colour doesn't really do anything, but you know, it's a nice thing. All right, so we're going to handle moving the frog. So I'm going to add a new con first condition. I'm going to check the frog isn't moving because I, I don't want you to be able to move if he's in, a, um, in motion. So I can check that by what animation it's on. So animation by number, um, it has to equal zero. Otherwise, no, I won't let you do it. Uh, what else do I have to check? I have to check that that timer uh, is greater than one, that timer we made. So just one second. Um, and then you're allowed to move. So um, where is that? Timers, uh, value of scene timer uh, is greater than or equal to one. So it's one second on, it's fine. You can do whatever you want. Cool, and I, I want to put that into the Frogger thingy, what's it? Beautiful. Uh, all right, let's start doing things. Okay, I'm gonna add a new condition. This is a sub condition, so I'm checking all that. Uh, I'm going to um, change the, I'll oh, check what keyboard um, key is being pressed. So other commands, keyboards, uh, where are we? Keyboard, keys um, released. And I'm going to do the up one first. So if, if I press up and release, what do I do? I'm going to change the angle of the frog. Frogger, there's angle, angle, uh, up is 270, so I'm going to rotate it to face up, I'm going to play the jumpy sound, other action, uh, sounds of music, play, uh, play a sound, choose a file, uh, that's music, sound, oh, beautiful, uh, yeah, it's all good, so the hop sound, I'm going to uh, change the animation to the uh, jumping, so frogger, animation by number, and set to one, so that's how I'm moving him, I'm going to uh, create a or set a scene variable, change number variable, so it's going to be called jump to x, and I'm going to set that variable to zero. I'm going to make another one, I'll just copy this code, paste it in, and instead of jump to x, it's going to be jump to y, and I'm going to make it equal minus 64. So this is um, remembering, this is how I work out where to, at the end of the an animation, uh, to move that frog. Uh, I'm going to um, change the scene variable, score, which I actually don't have yet, but as a matter, we'll just make one. Scene variable, uh, change number variable, score. And I give myself 10 points. I had 10 because I've jumped closer to the end. 
So you get some points for that. And then I also need to change the on-screen text, variable score, change the text, set it to, I've got to use an equation. Um, it's going to set it to variable string because it's a number changing it into the, um, and changing number into text so that the text thing can handle it. Um, what do I call it? Score. Beautiful. Uh, I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. Cool bananas. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to make a new event and I'm going to paste it in. And move it over one. Because it's all kind of the same, except now instead of up, we're going down. I'm going to add an extra condition for down, uh, just to check the frogger isn't already on the bottom of the screen. So uh, what am I checking? The Y position. Y position is got to be less than 670. So if you're on the bottom, I won't let you jump downwards. Small, nice to use like um, that. There you go. Extra condition. Everything else is kind of the same. The angle instead of um, 270, it's 90. That's facing down. Uh, the jump to Y instead of negative, it's positive. But everything else is kind of the same. Um, actually, I might as well just paste it in because I've still got that memory paste. Move it over. So having this as the initial condition means that it's not constantly checking these. It only checks if the animation's still. Uh, cool. Uh, left. So left, the angle is 180. The uh, jump to X whoops, becomes uh, minus 64. The jump to Y becomes zero. Uh, actually, we don't want to add score. Uh, so do I add score on this one? So I will, uh, that's good. This one, I'll, when I jump down, I'll actually take away from the score. So you can't just keep jumping backwards and forwards to add score. And I don't. I won't give you any score for um, jumping left and right. So just get rid of that. Beautiful. Just copy it and then paste it. Now I've got one more condition for uh, right. So press the right key. Uh, so now the angle is zero. Uh, instead of Adding 64, I mean subtracting 64, sorry, we're adding. Beautiful. And now what we have to do is actually make that happen. So we're going to make a new set of events that um, I'm going to call all of the time. So this is kind of done. So I'm going to add, um, whoops, no. So add new event group. Oh, oh. The time beautiful, and then I'm going to make that red because it's the color I want to make it. Apply that, just move that up one. Oh, I don't see that anymore. Cool, so a lot of work goes into making this work. First thing, I might as well um, do something with music. So I'm going to go to um, Music, I'm going to add a condition, uh, sounds and music, music on channels has stopped. Channel one, so the music on channel one has stopped, so that tune at the beginning or any other tune I'm playing has stopped. I'm going to add an action, other action, music and sound, music on channels, play, music and fire on the channel. Choose a file. There's a, a game, a one, the main one that it plays all the time. It's not sound, it's music. Uh, so main, it will play the main tune. Um, I'm going to make it a lot softer, just because it'll be annoying. If, um, but you'll probably make it higher than that. And I'm going to set the channel to one. So I'm just constantly using one channel so that only one tune plays at a time, which is undo. Okay, so that's just one of the things that we're going to do. 
Um, I'm going to add a new event and we're going to um, sort that frog out. So I, um, I, I need to move him. So I'm going to look at the frogger. I'm going to look at the number of animation. Match by number. Equal to, yeah, obstinch is equal to um, one. So it's the frog animation, like the jumping animation. Then I'm going to check that animation and check that it's finished. Animation is finished. Okay, so animation is finished and it's frog animation number one. So then I will set that animation back to the, the standing still animation. Frogger um, animation by number set to zero. And then I'm going to move the frog. So frogger position. Do, 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 position. And it's going to equal its current position. X add that variable I had, my variable jump to X. And I'll just copy all this. Paste it, and instead of X, it's Y. And instead of X, it is Y. Okay, that's a lot of code. One more thing, I might as well set that timer going. So I'm gonna, because it's another all of the time thing, I'm gonna add a new condition. New condition, the timer is, uh, what do I do? Less than or equal to 300. So the width is less than or equal to 300. Move that over. Uh, I'm going to make it wider. Timer width uh, add uh, 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is too much. It'll be too quick, but I. I want to see it working, so um, and I'll, I'll just adjust it back down later. Also, one thing I might want to do is the frog's put, um, too slow. I already know that, I, and I forgot to edit that, so I'll go to the frogger. Um, this is too slow. I'll make it um, 0.3, which is faster. I'm making, actually, I'll leave it. No, I'll, I'll make it 0.3. All right, it's a lot of things. Let's see if that all works. There we go. Jump. Why don't you jump down there? Oh, what's going on there? Uh, he's behind those logs, that's going to be a problem. But easy fix, all I need to do is go back in here, uh, right click on him, and uh, bring to front. Fixed. Okay, so we've done that. We've made the code, we've got the timer working. I didn't actually check what it is, I'll check it next time. Let's do uh, the frog on the log. So um, the coding for um, having that frog um, move with the log. So I'll go in here, I'm going to add a new a group, event group, and call it frog on a log. Frog on a log. Now I'm going to make it brown because color coding is king. Beautiful. And I'm going to add a new event. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to check whether that frog is colliding with uh, a log. So frog has collided with collision with log. Okay. And then, uh, then we have some subdivisions. So I'm going to add a new event. So the animation of the frog. So frog animation number zero so he's just sitting on the on the log that's a sub condition so he's colliding the log and his um, thing is zero um, i'm going to uh, add um, a force to the log so i'm going to add a force so the frog uh, force where are we add a force by angle angle zero and the uh, speed is the log dot variable speed, so the speed, whatever the speed of that particular log is, and it's going to be instant, so it's only happening while it's touching it, I don't want it to keep going. 
otherwise it'll just fly off the screen. Uh, that's cool. And now we want to add a new condition. And this one, we're going to check the uh, frog animation. Animation by a number is equal to one. So now he's jumping. I'm going to add a condition that uh, the angle of the frog angle right, can I find angle there it is angle angle equals uh, 90 so it's pointing down uh, or frog angle it's pointing up um, and I actually want it the opposite of that so I I'm going to invert that, say if it's not going to happen if it's pointing up, and it's not going to happen if it's pointing up. There's slightly weird physics in um, Frogger. If you're um, jumping left and right, you've got the momentum of the um, the log that you're on. Oops, I was copying that, didn't that work? Copy. Um, but if you're jumping um, up and down, you don't. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, kind of simple code to, that's quite complicated thing. There you go, beautiful. Boink, see how that works. And we'll check, we can test the um, diving frog. So it should stop when I, yep, see that's worked, that's beautiful. So when I um, add the depths, that will work. Cool, now nice. it's still working great. Okay, well, just got a few more things to do. Let's, um, that's all got to go in the frog and the log. We'll hide that. So let's uh, handle the lily pad. So I'm going to add a new group, uh, event group, lily pad. Cool, make it purple for no, no identifiable reason, but it's just a color I want to use. Fly, cool bananas. All right, so we're going to have an event. Uh, the frog uh, is colliding with uh, the lily. Okay. And we also want to check that the frog is finished jumping. We don't want it to do it instantly because that looks a bit lame. Uh, animation by number. So he's finished jumping and he's actually on the pad. That's good. So what we want to do there is uh, reset that wait timer. Uh, not that one, sorry. It's uh, other action. Time is the time. Start reset timer. So reset that wait one. So that uh, you don't accidentally jump in um, traffic. I'm going to delete the lily. Missed it, that one. Uh, delete. Nice. I'm going to create an object, the lily taken. So lily taken, create object, and I'm going to put it where that last, that lily was that we just killed. X. Dot Y. Cool, okay. And what else are we going to do? We're going to give us some points. So I might um, get the holder going because I'm going to steal stuff from that. I'm going to um, add to the score. So I'm going to add 100 points. And I'm going to reset the score so we can see that we've got that 100 points for um, getting the lily. I'm going to um, add one to a variable for our tunes. Do that right? Yeah, cool. So I'm going to create a new variable called home. Variables, scene variable, change number variable, call it home. I'm going to add one to it. So this is, I'm doing this just because I want it to play tunes. So this is a, a nicety, it's not really um, a crucial part of the game. I'm also going to reset the timer. This is kind of a clumsy way to do it. I kind of reset it a lot just in case um, uh, it's right, right at the end. I don't want you to die because you um, got it 
right towards the end of the thing. Um, cure. So now we're going to see if there's any um, lily pads left. So I'm going to add a new event, uh, add a condition, uh, lilies, uh, lilies, so there's a the lily pads there. I'm going to look at how many there are, number of currently on the scene. I want it if it's uh, greater than, number of lilies is greater than zero. So there's still some on there. So you've just um, got one, it's not the other one. This is a sub of this. I don't want to do this all the time. I just want to do it when I've got that. Um, so I want to change the position of the frogger. So frogger, I want to uh, move him to the beginning position. Uh, position, so what was that? 670, 672, if I remember correctly. And I want to point him up. So this is why I have that weight thing, so because I'm instantly throwing that frog down the bottom. I don't want you to keep uh, jump all of a sudden and then um, go up, jump into traffic because you were um, moving quickly. Uh, where is ankle? There it is, angle, so 270 is pointing up. Kill. Uh, um, that's all good. What else do we need to do? Okay, now we want to um, check uh, what the home number is. So I'm going to add a, a thing, add a condition, look for that home variable. It's the scene variable, number variable, home. Does it equal one, which we will first time around. There's a sub in here. Uh, if it equals one, I want to play a tune. So, uh, music and sound, a music on channels, a music file on a channel. Choose a file. So, I've got 20 home songs in there. I'm not going to do 20, I'm just going to do four. Um, but you can do 20. And if I was doing it for real, I'd do 20. Cool. Uh, make it quieter. Let's do whatever volume we want. Cool bananas. Copy. Oops, gotta make a new event. Paste it. Paste it. Paste it. So I got four. Put four tunes. So if it's two. Uh, I didn't put the channel, so I want our channel one. Uh, and then, so if it's two, choose a file, play song two. Beautiful. If it's three, change that to three. Play song three. So good, if it's four, play song four. And then I also need to um, reset that um, variable. So also, uh, variables, scene variable, change number variable, home. I set it back to zero, so the clock's over. Obviously, you can add 20 um, if you want. Uh, cool. So, what happens? Add a condition. If the lily, the lilies, number of lilies on the screen, where are we? Number of lilies on the scene is equal to zero. So, we've, we've basically finished the level. So, I'll move that over. Another sub thing there. Cool. So what do we do? Um, we're going to add another ten, to, uh, add another hundred points to the score. So we get two hundred points for finishing the level, and we'll update that on the screen. Oh, actually, I need to put that into the um, starting level. 
because I'll delete that. Um, set timer. Paste it there. Just check if that messes anything up. That's good. Sweet. Um, cool. Sorry, let me just leave that then. Um, I'm going to delete the frogger. Frogger. Actually, no. Uh, you know, I don't need to do that. I'm going to. Um, so I did the set variable. So I'm just losing track of what I need to do. Set. I've added 10 to 100 to score. Change the score. I'm going to play the um, tune. There's a tune for winning. Actions. Music and sound. Uh, play. Music on channels. Play the music file on channel. Choose the file. It's in the songs. Music, sorry. Music. Uh, level complete tune. Beautiful. Channel identifier 1. Volume 10. And OK. And then what I want it to do is wait 6 seconds because um, that's how long that song is. In the real game it actually loads the new level um, before um, you start the new, the new level, like it plays the tune in with the new level loaded. It's a bit easier to do it this way, so that's why I'm doing it. I don't think it's important enough to worry about. So wait. So what that this does, so it does all those things now, I'm going to tell it to wait 6 seconds and then it'll do the next thing in this list of things that it's doing. Uh, I'm going to uh, clear the screen, so I'm going to add an action, clear, I'm going to delete. So that, that clear group, if you remember, I did I just kind of probably don't remember, that's all of the objects, so it's just a, a nice way of just wiping the screen. There might be a way of doing it, um, but uh, I don't know. And then I'm going to add an action, uh, I'm going to set that start variable. To one. So this is how we, I tell the, the game it's time to load a new level. Uh, change number variable start set to one. And what the hell? Let's actually make that new level. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, I'm going to click on this and uh, duplicate that level nicely. <laughs> It'll already make it two. So I can go in here and let's just make it things a bit harder. So I'll make, not spares the sets, we'll make that minus 180. I'm not going to do a lot, but just so, I'm just doing enough so that you can see things that happen and it's going to work. Oops, didn't do minus. That's faster. Painful there. And that one. Let's zoom out a bit. A bit more. No, 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 we got that one. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's make this what, 200. Let's make it 230. Let's make it go crazy. There's not many of them on there. Uh, let's have a few less turtles, which was this, that's the, so the dipping one. That's the dipping one. So I'll get rid of that one. And that one. Get me. That should be okay. And now we'll get rid of one of these. Just to make it a bit harder. You can make them faster, you can do whatever you want, but you can see it's pretty easy to quickly make another level. Uh, let's see what. Well, everything, all well, that works. We've got time to work and everything else. We'll see why I haven't done that. The death stage. I'll deal with that at this stage. Ah, I know what I haven't done. Ah, uh, so this won't work because I haven't. Um, I did get rid of that change it, didn't I? So let's go into the code. So it didn't delete Lily. Ah, alright. Instead of Lily, it should be Lily taken. That's what I've done right there. Try it again. As the tune stops, you can jump for a second, and then run back into it. Alright, so let's 
So uh, I do need to, I didn't have it at the beginning, um, so where, oh, because I'll wait this, so yeah, I just need to add an action, Frogger. I did have that in the, on my notes, but I, I didn't realise what, why I needed it, that just needs to be up here. Cool, and then that's fixed. Alright, this all is a sub thing, so we've got 20 minutes and to get it all under an hour. Actually, a bit more than that because I've um, stopped and redid something. Um, all right, last one, kind of a big one. I'm doing another group. Just close all these. Uh, add a group. No, go down here. Add a bed group. I call it all of the dying. Because we do die a lot in this game. There's lots of different ways of dying. Uh, edit, uh, do a black, apply, kill. Let's move this down in here. Nice and neat. All right. So this is another one where, strictly speaking, I could do most of it in one condition, but it just doesn't work. So um, I do break it up a little bit. So we'll start with a um, condition. Uh, that the frog uh, is colliding with the lily. So I'm going to invert it. So I'm saying the frog isn't colliding with the lily is um, one of the conditions. And then I'm going to add another condition, and this can be an or condition. Well, that, that means I can have a whole list of things. If any of these things are true, um, do it. Uh, so I'm going to have the frogger. Frogger has collided with the car, uh, uh, or the frogger has collided with a bush, which is why I have this. Um, one that just makes it a bit hard to do, um, get the thing in if you have to get it exactly and not touching the bush. Uh, and I'm also going to check the uh, Frogger X position. So you're not allowed to go off the edge of the screen in this game. So Frogger X position, it's uh, greater than, so if I go over to 80, to, um, I'm off the screen, I'll die. A condition, Frogger, Exposition link is less than zero, so we've gone off the other side of the screen, uh, and I will die. And so that all that looks a bit weird. Right? If one of these conditions are true, I think that needs to be. This should be all in there, I think. Yeah, sorry. There we go. So I notice that. So if any of these things are true, it's going to do this thing. And what is it going to do? It's going to delete the frogger. Frogger, poor little frogger, is deleted. I just delete. Delete object. OK. Uh, it's going to reset the time so you can't die twice. No, this is a a clumsy way of dealing with it. I probably should have a, a switch to switch it on and off, but I, I can't be bothered. <laughs> okay, it's complicated enough. Uh, set to one. This is a simple solution. You don't actually notice it when you're playing. Um, I'm going to create a death object. So death, create an object where Frogger is. So the Frogger has been replaced by the skull and crossbones. Cool. Um, I need to change the Z order. This is a um, a, a problem with the um, load, loading external layers. It does make some things difficult. This is one of the things. I'm just going to set it to a high number and say 99. Just putting it on the top so you can see the, the silly thing. Um, I'm going to play the annoying death sound. 
election, um, music and sound, player sound, choose a file, some sounds, um, squash is the sound. And it's a bit obnoxious, so I'm going to make it a little bit quieter than it is naturally. So we've made the squash sound. Uh, then what I'm going to do is make it wait a second. So we'll just do one second. It waits and then it's going to delete the death. And it's going to take one of your lives. Variables. Actually, I've got a now that I think about it. You just use, I don't really need a variable to do this. Uh, scene variable. I could actually just use the animation to keep track. Anyway, too late now. <laughs> I've already done it this way. Uh, lives. Uh, set or subtract one. Okay. Sweet, so that's uh, the main chunk of it. Now I've got to check whether I have any lives left. So I'm going to add a new event, new condition, other variables, um, scene variable, number variable, lives is uh, we'll say we'll do we'll do the death first. Um, Oh no, no, we'll do the living first. So it's greater than or equal to zero. So I've got some lives left. Uh, what are, and that needs to be a subcondition of here. So if this is this stuff all above it has already happened. Uh, so what happens? Uh, I'm going to change the animation of lives to the new um, to my number. Change it to the, that variable. No, it doesn't actually string because it's it actually is expecting a number. Our lives. Beautiful. Uh, what else do I need to do? I'm going to do, uh, create a new frogger. Frogger. Create object in that position. 670. It's sad that I know this off the top of my head. 672. Um, cool. And then rotate it. Angle. I struggle to find the angle. That's 270. So I've made a new frogger. Uh, the Z order again. So um, uh, copy that. That's because again, it'll be underneath it all if I don't do this. I don't know why it's. Um, it is a um, using. Um, external layouts thing. I don't know if it causes some issues. Um, and then I'll reset the timer again, which I do every two seconds. There is reset the timer. Change the width, copy, uh, paste. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, new event. Rah. Copy. Now what happens if lives is less than zero? Wah, wah. Um, we're going to create the game over object. Uh, game over, sorry, create. And where do I put it? This then 5, 11 by 320. 511, 320. I'm just putting it in the middle of the screen essentially. Um, got to put it at the top again, so we'll just OK that. Set order annoyance. Put that at the top. Um, make it wait three seconds. Sink in that it's all over, 
And then uh, I'm going to change the scene to start. Uh, scene. This is kind of a quite easy way of um, resetting the game, essentially. Choose scene, go back to the welcome scene. Okay. Let's uh, preview that, see what happens. First thing I check, uh, I'm running out of time. I'm just going to let the timer time out. Oh, I haven't done the timer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just on the collisions. So, that worked. Bring me right back. Sorry. Um, I should be able to put the timer in there as one of the ways of dying. See if I can die. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, that all looks good. Uh, what was the other test? Oh, jumping off the side of the screen. Okay, all worked. Sweet. Cool. So, we're going to add some more ways of dying. Sorry about that, I'm making you wait for that thing. Uh, I'm going to copy this, stop copying the whole lot. Paste. And just getting rid of these conditions. And I need a new one. Let's do the timer that I was thinking about there. So add a condition, um, the timer, its width is greater than or equal to 300. And we die. All right, now let's try try to test the timer. It's the end. It should make you die. Nice. All right. Um, now that I know that works, I'm going to. Um, going to slow that timer down so that it doesn't confuse me and I think I'm having collisions with things when I'm not. Um, so just make the number smaller. Uh, cool. Alright, so the time is good. Copy. But yeah, as I said, this should I should be able to have that in there, but it just doesn't work. Um, paste. And so I've got the timer. Alright, the last one is the water. So I'm going to, uh, with the water, Delete that the yeah, one I made. Uh, I'm going to check that the frogger is still because you can't you can jump over water, I don't hate you for jumping over it. So animation by number has to be zero, it has to be stopped for the water to hurt me. Um, I have to collide with the water. So the frogger is colliding with the water also has to happen uh, and then the frogger uh, can't isn't colliding with the log so collision so sorry frogger um, it doesn't actually matter whether you do it the other order but I just always do it in this order uh, log and invert that so it's not colliding with the log um, then I should die okay just a couple of sneaky things that I've missed uh, to finish up the game I forgot to change the sound of the water, so when you fall in the water, you need to change the sound to plunk rather than the normal squash sound. Uh, we also need to add, the, in the clear group, you need to have the score in the clear group, which we didn't have before. And in the events, we need that in the start, we need to change the score, like uh, set it to whatever the score was, otherwise it'll be zero and it could be jump. It'll fix itself pretty quickly, but still, it'd be nice if it did that. And the last one that we didn't do in the lily pad, when we jump on the lily, there's a, a safe landing sound. And because this is the tutorial that never ends, I've got a little refinement on how Frogger works to make him more responsive. So let's go to Frogger. Where I used to have key release, now I have key press, so it'll do it straight away. And for that to work, I've added a variable called jump. So I've added jump, set jump to one on each of those key presses. And I've checked that jump equals zero before I can allow myself to jump. So jump has to be equal zero before I can jump. And then in all of the time, if up, down, left, and right are not happening, so I've inverted those key presses. So jump, down, inverted. So none of those keys are being pressed. I set jump to zero. It's a small refinement, but it'll make it more responsive. 
All right, let's have a look at the game. Okay, let's go. I'm trying to get a perfect run. <laughs> it's taking me a few goes because I am not very good at Fogger. Ah, uh, no, I'm not going to get that. First one's a tough one. So you probably should get your things going a bit slower than I've got them here. But it's a little bit on the fast side even um, yeah, for, the, for the first level. I think the arcade game was actually quite hard. But, um, so it's not far away from the game. Nice, that was the tough one. And, well, thanks very much for listening. Hopefully, it wasn't too long, but uh, that's about as quick as I could get it done. I'm pretty happy with the end result. This is a pretty good version of Frogger. I was on the edge. But thanks again for listening. I will catch you on the next one. Beautiful. What a way to end. Bye. Thank you. Do, 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 do. And here's the new level. All working perfectly. Thanks for listening.